Hello world, welcome to the 85th video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. I posted recently that I wouldn't have a video coming out this week, and that was because I am moving after nearly 21 years in the Air Force. I'm retiring, and we're moving from our current location in D.C. to Louisiana. And so, but, um... I was able to figure out one of the codes that I wanted to show off and so I was able to make a video today. And so in the uh, previous video of this Python for Finance playlist, we were able to create a two grid system where we showed on top the S&P 500 versus the Russell 2000 and on the bottom the S&P 500 versus the inverted yield or the yield curve and so you could see that as how the Russell 2000 compares to the S&P 500 and what happens when the yield curve goes inverted or um, just the impacts in general to the S&P 500 and so that's great and with the grid option a matplotlib you can do up to four grids but that would look a little messy because um, we were having we were having to do a tight layout before. So what I wanted to do was I want more than four options to compare against. I want unemployment numbers. I want the yield curve, Russell 2000. Um, there, there's just a bunch of stuff: consumer price index, gold prices, and so the four grid. Um, would meet its max at four different options. And so what I wanted to build and what we're going to do today is we're going to look at using the matplotlib radio buttons and we can switch back and forth in between the S&P 500 uh, versus the Russell 2000 and then switch to the S&P 500 versus the yield curve and we can switch back and forth quickly. So if we had 10 different data points, we can do we can switch back and forth. So let's run it. So we have an empty data folder right now. So we're going to run this. And what it's going to do, and you can watch the first and second video of this and see how we're getting from Yahoo Finance, the S&P 500, the Russell 2000 indexes, and from a website called Quandle, the Treasury Yield. So I will put the, the links to those videos in the description. But for now, here is, and I will move my head. Well, let's just exit out of my face. So this is what we have now, just one large graph. And right now we're comparing the S&P 500 index in red to the Russell 2000 index right here. And as you can see, just now, we have those files downloaded directly to our data folder. All right, and then we can switch to this yield curve. There we go. So what you're seeing is the S&P 500 on this left y-axis. It's actually the same as this. It doesn't move compared to the yield curve. And that's in green right here. So this is the right y, the right y axis. And so as you can see in the previous videos that we did, this is the inverted yield curve. So the the 10 year treasury was worth less than the or had a lower yield than the three month treasury. So it went to negative one and that's when the S&P 500 was at an all time high. Then as this went up, this went down and vice versa. So as you can see, it has a pretty good inverse relationship. I wouldn't trade the S&P 500 purely off the yield curve, but this is just one data point. So if you look here, I'll have the option to go down several, where if we just did a grid, we would be limited to four and it would be a tight layout. Now see that the right Y axis changes this changes down here, the legend. There you go.
So make sure you've watched the other two videos before we go into this because I'm just going to jump straight into the code. So what we did, we downloaded the files and we moved the files. We've seen that in the previous video. We've done no changes to the SMP 500 once we do have it. We made no changes to the yield curve, which is all of this. Right, we're using pandas to look at this data. And then the Russell 2000. We also picked the dates we want to look at, which is 1990 to 2022. And then we made sure the S&P 500 and the Russell both started and ended with those dates. And then this is where it's new. So first we create lines, right? We create an empty list, I believe, right? Curly braces are lists. Uh, somebody in the comments, please yell at me if I'm wrong. Then we're going to create our um, figure and access using this. We've done this in previous code. This is the size. You pass it the figure size. I took out the tight layout because we don't need it now that we only have one chart. Then we start off with our S&P 500 data. So we're going to plot. The S&P 500 by the date on the x-axis, the close by the y-axis. Then I want it in color red, and I want the symbol to be what we did up here. That's the S&P 500 index. Okay. Then I want the legend in the upper left. So the x, which we we did up here. Right, we define that here, dot legend, and I want the location to be in the upper left. Then we're going to make a twin of the x-axis using this. Axi2 equals x dot the twin of x. And then we're going to pass it these two lines. Right, The first line is the Russell 2000. That's going to be the label. Then we're going to plot that using the date as the x-axis, the closing prices as the y-axis, the color blue for the chart, and we're going to pass it the symbol. Again, make sure you watch the previous two videos for this to make sense. Then we're also going to add to this lines list this yield curve. Same thing. We want the date to be the x-axis, This the difference between 10-year and 3-month to be the y-axis, color green, and we're going to pass it this inverted yield symbol. Then we're going to create the, the um, radio button box. So I want that color. I'm going to call this the axis color. Light goldenrod yellow. Don't yell at me. That's not. Uh, I didn't name that like that. Um, that's just what it's called. I'll rerun this at the end of it. So then we're going to create a variable called racks, and that is just what they used in the documentation. So we're going to plot on the axis. This is just something I had to experiment. This is the location. So I think this is uh, top, bottom, left, and right, I think. And then we're going to pass it this face color, which is the light goldenrod yellow, right? And then the two radio buttons are going to be radio equals radio buttons, capital R, capital B. And so when you go to your import statements, you got to make sure that you import. In our previous videos, we imported um, matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. But you also have to do from matplotlib.widgets import radio button. Okay, now I'm going to go all the way back down. So once you import the radio buttons, you can do radio equals capital R and B radio buttons. You're going to pass it this location and the face color using racks. And then you're going to give it its two labels. So you want this Russell 2000 and yield curve to match what's in the lines list, which we already did. Then you need to do a toggle function. And what you want to do is pass it this label. And the labels are right here. This Russell 2000 and the yield curve. 
which also matches this, the Russell 2000 and the yield curve. So it's going to detect the label. And for each line in the lines.values, it's going to set it to visible. So it's going to hide it, basically, by setting it to false. And then whatever label you clicked, lines.label, we're going to set that visible to true. Then we want to change the title to whatever label we're looking at. So the S&P 500 versus, right now I only have two labels, the Russell 2000 and the yield curve. Then I want that legend to go into the lower right. And if the label equals yield curve, you have to set the Y, your Y axis, so set underscore Y limitations. And I want it to go to negative 2 and positive 5. And I want to draw this axis horizontal line at the 0 so you can see when the interest rates go, go below the zero, right? So I only have two right now, so I only need one if statement. But if I had more, I'd have to create multiple L if statements. But for now, the else is the Y limitation is going to be zero because the Russell 2000 hasn't gone below zero and 2000. Now, these are hard coded values, and I don't like to do that. So what I'd rather do is go to use pandas to figure out when the uh, the highest value in the file and go like 200 over that. Or if it's the yield curve, go one over that. But for now, I just chose to uh, just ch to hard code the limits. Then we're going to do this figure.canvas.drawIdle. So what this does is redraws the plot. Then you need to pass it this radio which is your radio button function or variable on clicked. So when it's clicked, you're going to do this function toggle, which we just talked about. Make sure you don't do it like this, right? You're not calling the function now. That's going to throw an error. Just pass it the function without calling it. And you do that by not putting parentheses after it. That way, whenever it's clicked, it's going to take action. Then we're going to toggle the Russell 2000 and you just pass it the first line if I call this yield curve I need to make this top one yield curve and I need to pass this change this to yield curve so basically this is just whatever first entry you have in your radio and then you're going to do a plot dot show and then that draws your plot Let's exit out of this real quick. We've already downloaded the files, so we can, for speed, let's comment these out. Okay, now let's uh, call it again. So this is the size of the figure. This is the Russell 2000, and as you can see, this is the default value because it's the first one. The blue, like I mentioned, this is the, uh, what was it called? The light golden, light golden rod yellow. That is what this is called. You can make it whatever you want. Okay, and then when we toggle to the yield curve, it's going to look at the label and say, oh, we're on the yield curve now. So this is going to change to S&P 500 versus the yield curve. It's going to put the legend in the lower right. And it's going to say, if the label is yield curve, we're going to change the Y axis. And we're going to draw this horizontal orange line. As you can see, there's a horizontal orange line now. And the axis goes from negative 2 to 5. We switch back to the Russell 2000. That zero line is gone. And this goes all the way up to 2000, which was my Y axis limitation. And the title changes. So now, when I'm doing my stock market analysis, I can go down and look at all the different types of data points I want to collect. And that is it. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please leave a comment and tell me congratulations on your retirement if you've watched all the way to the end of this. And please consider subscribing to my channel, like this video, and uh, thanks for watching. Goodbye world.